Well, hello and welcome to the Monday edition of Dividend Cafe brought to you on this Tuesday, September 3rd. I am David Bonson, Chief Investment Officer, Managing Partner at the Bonson Group. Yesterday was Labor Day, so we did not have a Monday edition. So I'm doing it for you here today. Um, I recognize that a lot of you are probably only tuning in because you want to hear an update on how the USC game went on Sunday night. And uh, you may not know that USC won that game, but I also understand that there are some of you that um, watched it, digested it, have seen the highlights you know, a number of times, and you're ready just to get straight into the market summary. So I'll, I'll leave the USC win over SEC powerhouse uh, LSU alone, and the final minute drive to to score the winning touchdown with eight seconds to go. We're going to skip over that and go straight to today's market, which uh, today's market was not a winning uh, final drive type moment. The S&P was down over 2.1%. The NASDAQ was down a brutal three and a quarter percent. The Dow was only down one and a half percent, but that's 626 points. And the catalyst to today's sell-off, not only has everything been up quite a bit as of late, but uh, obviously with the NASDAQ down that much, you can guess it was largely a tech-driven sell-off. The tech sector alone, which was the worst performing sector, was down 4.43%. NVIDIA was down 9.5%, and and it's down now 23% from its recent high. So you kind of had a big tech semiconductor driven sell off, but it it spread around uh, a significant part of the market. Um, There was a a bit of concerning economic data just as late last week, the Q2 real GDP number was revised upwards. But then on the flip side of that today, the ISM manufacturing number was worse than expected. It was the fifth month in a row of contraction. In manufacturing. So this is an ongoing theme of ours, that there is a sort of mixed bag of economic data. And um, I pity anybody who's trying to extract a certain strong narrative of either economic strength or economic weakness out of the data we have when the data continues to be so ambiguous. Um, But, you know, going into today, you had 35% of stocks at 20-day highs 80% of the companies in the S&P 500 were above their 200-day moving average. That's very high. Um, I think all that's going to be adjusted after after today. We'll get those recalibrated numbers tomorrow. Um, In terms of other market highlights that we may want to go through here, let's see what else is worthwhile. I think the fact that the consumer staples sector was not only up, but up. 0.76%, 0.76%, three quarters of a percent. REITs were up as well. It's not very common you get a day of this type of violence with the Dow down over 600 points, the NASDAQ down over 3%, and you still have a couple sectors up at all. Um, but nevertheless, some of those defensives hung in there very well. Uh, the bond market was up uh, pretty nicely. It had sold off at the end of last week as yields. Um, had had increased, but today the 10-year was down 6.7 basis points, uh, the 10-year bond yield closing at 3.84%. I think the, the other piece you're going to want to continue to watch is this correlation between an even-weighted index of the S&P and a cap-weighted, where um, on a relative basis, even a day like today where everything's down, the cap weighted doing so much better than the, excuse me, the even weighted doing so much better than the cap weighted, which is just what you expect when the concentration in big tech is so high. Um, and that that is, I think, the ongoing story is that even as markets have recovered over the last four weeks uh, from what was a tough end of July and early August, um, there really has been quite a significant relative rally of even weighted to cap weighted, which is which is healthy for there to be broader distribution. Um, 
this is interesting on NVIDIA. I mentioned it was down 9% today, but the uh, profit margin on NVIDIA is so high. I love these uh, data points here. 76% gross profit margin. So if you look at their uh, trading price uh, to sales, they're, they're currently trading at 25 times revenue, okay? Forget earnings, um, where the multiple, you know, at 60 to 65, 70 times earnings sounds really bad, but 25 times sales sounds worse. But it's also trading at 18 times next year's expected revenue. And, and that is really a multiple that is assuming profit margins hold, those sales expectations hold, and that's based on, obviously, if you're going from 25 times sales to 18 times sales, that's based on a significant amount of expectation for revenue growth. The revenue growth may come. The margins may hold. I don't think so. Um, but if all those things do pull together, you're still talking about a company at 18 times gross revenue just can't be called cheap by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, all these NVIDIA points are uh, at an uh, article you can see in the show notes, cnbc.com. Uh, there were plenty of other media references over the weekend as well. I read a report from Peter Bukvar. I read his book report every day. I think it's quite good. And, and the data points in NVIDIA all tell a similar story. Uh, on the news front, the, the uh, story over the weekend, the tr tragedy of six hostages in uh, Gaza found um, deceased, uh, killed by Hamas, one of them being an American citizen. Um, very uh, uh, awful story and speaks to the seeming futility of trying to negotiate a ceasefire while hostages are being killed in the middle of the negotiations. Uh, Vice President Harris joined President Biden who, uh, and, President, and former President uh, Trump in uh, some, excuse me, advocating to block the uh, Nippon Steel acquisition of U.S. Steel. Uh, our ally Japan uh, wanted to put $2.7 billion into the U.S. Steelmaker. This... Um, I believe is not really a surprise that Vice President Harris came out on this issue. And nevertheless, I consider it unfortunate. And I considered it unfortunate when President Trump came on this same side of the issue as well. Uh, on the economic front, I mentioned ISM. I mentioned that real GDP growth had come in better than expected. One just quick tidbit that's kind of off the subject of U.S. economic data. But I just reviewed a series of demographic uh, considerations from in a commentary that Torsten Slock, the chief economist at Apollo, had sent out on Monday, Labor Day. And China is at a 1.0 fertility rate. So not only is their population growth now gone officially negative, but uh, you're talking about a significant expectation for population growth for decades to come when you're essentially below half of what you need to be for replacement rate in terms of uh, demographics. July home sales were down 5.5%. They were expected to be up a little bit, so affordability continuing to weigh on the ability uh, to move home product whatsoever, especially existing homes. The Fed update is not very different from last week. We're now looking at a 67% chance of a quarter point hike in September a 33% chance of a half point hike, but then a, um, a very high percentage in November of an additional quarter point, a 100% chance of another quarter point. But um, really the, the cur yield curve in the futures market doesn't care uh, whether or not it happens September or, no or November. The point being that they're predicting uh, we're gonna get uh, 75 basis points out of the yield curve by November and then um, a full percent out by December. So uh, lots of rate cuts expected between September, November, December, regardless of the magnitude and, and so forth. Uh, crude is down to $70.41, crude oil, um, down over four and a quarter percent today. I believe that's the low of the year. At the very beginning of 2024, it was right around there, um, but really hasn't retouched that $70 mark since the beginning of the year. 
Uh, midstream energy, by the way, was up one and a half percent last week, uh, even with oil down. But natty gas was up. The S&P was up a little. You know, there's all these different metrics, but the midstream energy sector has proven to have just a very low correlation to all of them. Ten years ago, MLPs were over 60 percent of the total midstream universe. And now they're only 35 percent. Been a lot of mergers, acquisitions. MLPs that converted into corporations. Uh, so that uh, limited partnership uh, sense of the midstream space has come way down and, and corporations and Canadians have, have come up. Um, all right, I'm going to leave it there for the week. There's a few more tidbits you may want to check at Dividend Cafe. Brian will be with you Wednesday and Thursday uh, for the, just the daily recap that we try to do every day. And then on Friday, I'll have the Dividend Cafe as always. Um, reach out with any questions at all that you may have. And thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for reading The Dividend Cafe. Mm -hmm.